Yes, indeed. It is time for the Burning Platform. This is our opportunity to catch up on all the big stories in the news, to find out what's happening in South Africa, both politically and socially, as well as economically, frankly. And we, we try to get as many different people on from different walks of life as possible. Occasionally, it's also good to check in with the political experts and those people who do analysis of these things. And today we're joined by two of them. We'll be with them in just a minute. The first of them is well-known. In fact, both of them are well-known to, to our audience. First one, Lito Ntoba, who is a, a lecturer at Central University of Technology that's in the Free State. And he is not embarrassed to admit that his own municipality is a garbage dump. And he's rude about them, which they deserve. And Lieto is going to join us in just a minute. Also, Sile Ngobese, who is Big Daddy Liberty's host of the Big Daddy Liberty show on YouTube, and someone who drives around the country speaking to people, doing his own research, finding out what moves people, trying to spread the ideas of liberty and, and uh, being less dependent on government, something which I think all of us can associate with in some way, shape, or form. I mean, in the end, whether things go well or badly with the politicians, it's much better to not rely on them as much as most people think they should. Um, and the less you rely on politicians, the less it bothers you when things don't exactly go your way. But we do have quite a lot to talk about this morning. Pums? Before, before the guys get here, I, you mm. know, everybody's have been having their manifesto launches and there's lots of talk with posters and right. all sorts of things. There have been quite a lot of chatter in the, in the comments about people who have put out posters and who haven't in various municipalities. Yeah. Last week was the IFP's manifesto launch. Now, and, what's, and, what's, happen, what's happening with them? Because, I mean, Mango Sutu is very old now, and clearly they need some fresh blood. But what are they actually promising in their manifesto? What's different? They do have fresh blood. They do have fresh blood. They've got, they've got a new leader. They've got and everybody's favorite, their spokesperson, um, and also MP, Nkululego Hlengwa. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. but this is the this is I think by far my most favorite story of this election. You know, on the on the ballot paper, there's the name of the party, there's mm -hmm. a face of the person who is standing in that particular municipality. And right. then, as we now know from Monday, there's an acronym that must be registered about the party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we know, this, we know this because Herman Mashaba had huge trouble in this respect. <laughs> He's pissed off about that. But yeah. the, the IFP has opted to have on their ballot the picture of Mango Sutu, Butelezi. Mm -hmm. Even and though they have a different party leader. Even though they have a different party leader. And, and their rationale, which is my favorite rationale that I've ever heard, their rationale is if Colonel Sanders, if KFC can have the Colonel's picture <laughs> after all these years, this is the picture that they would like to have. Wow. I was like, this, is, this, this makes sense, brand. It does make sense. Um, brand, and, you know, brand awareness, being very yeah. aware of your brand. And recognizability is a major factor in, in politics. You know, if you if you recognize the face, I'm sure the ANC would still love to be having uh, a Madiba face uh, as their as their face, and then probably should if they want to get votes. Well, I was fascinated to see that Action SA's posters have mm. also got they've they've got their mayoral candidate. I saw the Iguru Lendi poster has got their mayoral candidate, and just to to the the left of him, just be, slightly behind him, is Herman Mashaba. Mm hmm. Dear, well, so. that just shows you. Just shows you. I think. I think that's a good marketing strategy, frankly. Yeah. I, it's it's fascinating to watch for a person like me who's that interested in marketing. I love it. I absolutely um, love it. I love to see what it does for them. You know, um, they, but Dogo, they have been consistent about their campaigning. Dogozo says Mkuluko um, is his name. He's really uh -huh. cool. Seems very logical. Okay. Well, that's good. The ANC has admitted that crowdfunding is not allowed for the purchases of posters yet. Have you seen any ANC posters in your area? Because I haven't seen any, not one. No. No. I have Does not. The, I've, the I've seen a lot of independents in, in our area. In our area, we've got quite a lot of independents. We've got some DA candidates. Mm. Um, and Herman Mashaba is everywhere. Yeah, he, he's clearly put a lot of money behind this and has 
has made sure that he's got the funding to be able to to publish, uh, to, you know, to print posters and and to to get some publicity out there. So good for him. I mean, sometimes that stuff works because just people only remember the most recent thing they've seen, and sometimes that's what they vote for. There, there have been a lot of quite surprising things happening this week in the in the front, you know. So there's the there's the IFP's um, face debacle. There is the name debacle that Action SA have been going through. Right. And initially, I mean, when we saw at, at, when we saw the the first kind of reports about it and their statement that they put out on Sunday, saying that the I that the IEC has omitted their name off the ballot. We, yes. we were all quite like, whoa, are you see, what are you doing? And and Herman S Herman Mashaba and Action SA have been have have been going up against the IEC from the from the jump. You know, initially their yeah. their logo wasn't accepted, their colors weren't accepted, they had to resubmit all of that. And we're like, what is going on with the IEC? Is the IEC sabotaging Action SA? Well, there, there definitely seems to be something going on in terms of, of of their constant legal battles, and and maybe they are. Maybe there's a, well, maybe there's a, you know, a lot of people say that the IEC is just another organ of the ANC. They're really cynical people. I think that though, and so I wondered because on Monday they had given there was an ultimatum till ten a.m. for the IEC to rectify this, and then on Monday afternoon for the IEC to release a statement that says actually when the when the forms were submitted, Action SA omitted in the form to put that this is the, the name that they want as their acronym. I was just like, whoa. And of course it didn't take it didn't take long before there were political digs at Herman Mashaba, and this came from Jimmy Manye, saying mm -hmm. if they can't fill in if they can't fill in the IEC forms, can we really trust them to look after? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this coming, this coming from a guy who called his party the ATM, and it turned out, and it turned out they, they were just an ATM. That party it's doesn't exist. It's not his anymore. party. It's well, not his party. He, he was the guy. He was the front runner for a while, and it seems, seems it was just a job between him being spokesperson for the ANC and spokesperson for Jacob Zuma. It was like sheltered employment for him. That's what it seems like to me. But the party still exists because on Friday they. They make a big announcement of one of their candidates in for Tswane, for an area in Tswane. Uh, and it was Noma Kula Roberts. Oh, you're kidding. K yes, Kuli Roberts. Sir. Yes, sir. Really? <laughs> I saw they her. Put out a... She didn't tell me she was going into politics. That's hilarious. That's because they, they put that out on Friday. <laughs> and on Sunday... Uh, on Sunday, on Sunday evening, they put out a statement saying she has withdrawn due to funding issues. <laughs> so the ATM is not an ATM for everybody. That's hilarious. All right. Well, let's welcome uh, crazy Nate. world of politics this week. How's it been? We haven't seen you for a while. Are you good? Yes, I'm good. Yes, okay. Hi, Pupi. Yeah. Hello, Leato. It's nice to see you again. Um, it feels like it's been very long since we last spoke. Uh, has anything improved in Velcom? Um, do you want to hear a funny story? Yes. Go on. Yeah, absolutely. We're here for it. Yesterday, after um, we we spoke and like um, the guy sent me the links for um, for me to come onto the show, I go mm -hmm. to an ANC mass meeting, and guess yeah. what? As you walk into the meeting, it's like in an open felt in a in a primary school. There are two gunmen standing in front with the political leaders. One guy with an M4 assault rifle and the other guy with a 9mm and they're standing there with their face half covered. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. But that sounds intimidating what? as hell. I mean, why would they do and, that? It no, no. And nobody bothered to tell us what, who these two people are with these big ass guns. Nobody cared. No one at all. So all through when these, when these people are speaking, the yeah. one guy is standing behind the ANC member with an M4 rifle the whole time. I'm like, are you people not doing PR? Does nobody understand that having a gunman standing behind you while you speak in an it's open democratic forum is not a good look? Wow. Yeah. So That's there's campaigning. Terrible. Yo, it was the weirdest thing. It wasn't even campaigning. They just had a guy singing 
and this politician with this guy with a huge gun standing behind him. Right, and then they left. Let's What's speculate. the campaign message? Let, What's the let's campaign speak. message? Cam- um, campaign we're mes- sorry. Um, we're yeah. sorry. We're going to fix the, the sewage. Um, and um, the reason why we were so bad was because our mayor was like a taxi driver who was popular. And so he didn't even defend the party. We hate him just as much as you do. So please vote for us this time. We'll bring a better person. That was literally what they were saying. Jesus. Um, because remember, obviously- we had... They've run out. They, they They've run gave out us a count. They gave us a count. We had 18 sewage processing plants throughout the Machabing region. Guess how many are working, Gareth? I'll, please guess. Two? Three. Three. Wow. Three are working. So basically, if you're going to the toilet, you're mm. basically just in a pit latrine that looks nicer than other pit latrines. We're basically right. just right. defecating in holes right now. You see, I, I, I start off by laughing and, and mocking that municipality because it's been run into the ground by the ANC. But the fact is, I think that the reason that these guys have these gunmen around them is because there are the, the assassination threat they inside did. the ANC is really scary at the moment. Like the ANC... There are people who are fighting over positions and they're willing to kill each other. This old taxi driver who they were talking about has probably hired people to come and kill that guy. I I don't understand. Like, remember, in Valcom, they're struggling to pay salaries of people who work at the municipality. So why are you killing each other? You can't even pay each other. Like, it makes no damn sense. Like, and my yeah, biggest don't. problem is... Nobody cares. Like nobody, there are municipalities where other political parties are just like, we're not going to go campaign there. We don't care about this place. We're not going to go start off on a debt of like seven or eight billion rand. We're not going to yeah. do that to ourselves. In other words, they've poisoned it to... everyone else. It's a poisoned well. Yeah. I was going to ask if there's any other campaigning, if any of the other political parties have shown interest. No, there are no posters. There's nothing. Like the only other party that campaigns is the Freedom Front Plus and it does it in the white areas. Like they, they don't they don't even bring people to talk to the people. They just like put boards up and say, we know you're white. You'll vote for us because we're white too. Like this, there are places in this country where people aren't just willing to, to, um, to go and campaign anymore. Because if you think about it, if you're coming here, you are inheriting round about... Um, so the ESCOM and water debt alone is to the count of 8 billion rand. And then you have the loans they've been making to pay salaries for the past three years. So your debt is around about 14 billion if we're being kind to you, right? And you're also inheriting systems that are totally broken. So you're basically going to start a new municipality if you come here. You, have, you must have a plan to build sewer plants. You must have plans to build all other infrastructure like roads, so you're basically a pioneer. You, you're coming from 1622 and you're starting welcome from fresh. And so we are actually one of the better municipalities in this, in oh this province. God. If you're going to, if you're going to, to um, uh, what is this, uh, Malutia Pofum, you go there, they basically actually have nothing. Like the water infrastructure is gone. There's nothing to work from. And the debt there, the municipality had the desks and computers and chairs taken because they were in so much debt. So they, they had repossessed the, the 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 seats and the chairs and the computers inside the municipality. So you're basically walking into an empty building. You're going to have to buy new computers, new chairs, new desks, new pens. With money that doesn't exist. So Mark says, and he lives in, in Velcom too, he says, when you drive into Bronville in Velcom, you can literally taste the fecal matter in the air. Oh, my God, that sounds right. Oh, yeah. So here's the, let me give you the double kick about Bronville. So Bronville is right next to one of the dilapidated sewer plants. And then mm. on the other side is a, it's not an informal settlement. It's RDP housing that doesn't have any sewer systems connected to it. So those people had to dig pit latrines. So you can literally smell the pit latrines from the one side. And then on the other side is just a sewer plant <clears throat> pumping raw sewage into the neighborhood. It sounds absolutely disgusting. How, how did it even get to this? I mean, 
how, how did it happen? Just give us a quick reminder. Take us down memory lane because what I love about having you on is that you give us the the, the little story. You focus in on, on your own municipality, which is something very few people, especially journalists, they just don't do it anymore. Nobody cares. And then you also give us the view from the outside and from the top um, because you have to. That's part of what you lecture your students in. So, so give us the story of how this all happened, Leto. So from the start, the problem was the bigger ANC. So a lot of people think of the ANC as this organization that was helping to bring South Africa out of apartheid, right? But it actually in towns like the, the Free State or in, in Velcom, um, in small towns, the ANC didn't exist. So in 1994, when they came back, all they had was this name, the ANC. So what they had to do was to handpick people from a crowd to say, oh, you're a teacher, um, you're a taxi driver, you're popular, you're going to be the counselor, you're going to be the mayor. That's where the mm. problem started. And then the problem grew when people, well, when the corruption started. So the corruption started small, right? Brown right. paper bags in change, exchanging hands, um, these small little details. And then so the smarter people who weren't really committed to the ANC came in. So the people with the CFO position and who has qualifications, but he's just there for the money, right? Or yeah. one of the municipal managers. I remember once there's a taxi rank in town and to build the toilets, it's literally just four toilet stalls inside each for males and females. And that small building cost around about 32 million rand. And nobody said anything, right? So it was those small things. You had people buying a pen for like um, 500 rand. So the whole process was being abused. The And nobody did anything about the red flags. I mean, consistently since 1994... The Machabe, uh, the Machabe municipality has had 400 million rands of wasted expenditure and fruitless expenditure. And then they've always had 300 million rand of money that can't be traced. So that's 700 million that goes missing, basically. Like nobody knows where this money is going to. Nobody knows who's taking it and when. And last year, apparently, the municipality was hacked and 1.7 billion rand disappeared from the account. And till this day, nobody knows where the money is. No. Like, there's no SIU investigation, nothing. So the, the fact that this greater ANC has, co has been corrupt, and in smaller towns, the corruption is so condensed that it, it weighs down on every single thing. And so now the problem becomes that when you give out a tender, or when you even give out, when you give out jobs, right? Mm. If, you come to, if you come to Machabin, the people who work at the municipality will tell you, you will never get fired in government. They know mm. this because yes. my, my, my uncle brought me in, my aunt brought me in. And so right. nobody knows whose cousin you're firing and how uh -huh. important that cousin is to that person or how important that person is to the ANC. And so nobody wants to hold anybody accountable. So when I talk about these sewer plants, for instance, um, if you could drive to Velcom, I could show you, we could literally walk into a sewer plant owned by the mm. government and there's no security. There are no people working there. It's literally just a building that's decaying. And people just go in there, steal pipes, steal windows. Like, literally, they've stolen the windows off of the sewer plant. So, Leto, what, what's going to happen? Because you, you say the ANC had a, a campaign in an open field with two gunmen. But, but who else? I mean, who would you vote for? I mean, what can people do in Velcom? What can, is there someone else they can vote for? No, there isn't. So they're going to, still, to be, so they're going to vote. So they're going to vote ANC, or they're just not going to pitch. Yes. Yeah, so you're probably going to get an ANC with. Um, and remember, the IEC doesn't count when you don't go and vote. So if 300 people vote for Gareth to be mayor, he'll be mayor. Yeah. So they're so, still going to get it. So the ANC is still going to get in because there's no one here. There's there's no coalition of people who are trying to bring meaningful change. Everyone who's claiming to bring meaningful change is just a disgruntled ANC member. So everyone who's saying, oh, this is wrong, vote for me, they were stealing money five years ago. So in other words, if you if you are in Velcom and you want to have a good life, get out of Velcom. Yeah, leave. Just leave. That's your only option. Leto, Leto can, can you give me and the, the listeners a, a, a bit of background on the sociology of Velcom. So 
who who are the people that live in Valcom? What is the employment like in Valcom? What kind of opportunities are there? What young people, what do they have available to them in Valcom? That infrastructure, that information. Um, so at the beginning, Valcom was a mining town. It was basically based on the mining around the town. So it, mm-hmm. everywhere you go, um, you, you see um, sort of like these huge mountains of just rock that has been taken out of the ground. And you also see um, the, um, I forget what they call them, but it's like these huge sand dunes, right? And yep. then so mine dumps. the issue, mine dumps, right? So the big issue is there was never anybody who took on any other industry. It was either you were mining or building something related to the mines or selling something related to the mines. And so there was never any other industry except for mining. Now, the mining companies are leaving because basically they've mined everything they can mine tangibly on an on a industrial scale. So now what happens is we're suffering from like almost 80% youth unemployment, right? Um, because if you're going to be employed in Valcom now, it's either you're, in, you're working in the government, so you're going to be a fireman, police officer, traffic cop, teacher, nurse, right? Mm. Or you work at the municipality, which also has has now overemployed people because that's what the ANC is here. It's a, an employment agency. A so if employment. you go to the yes, so if you go to the if you go to the municipality, you find people sharing offices like seven people in one office <laughs> because we keep hiring girlfriends and boyfriends and cousins and brothers. And so at the end of the day, you you get this backlog of people who can't even do simple jobs at the municipality. By the so way, now, they, all have, they all have jobs in inverted commas, but they don't actually do anything. Yes, they, they all yeah. have jobs, but they don't work. They have and work. So, they have work. There's no, you know. No, they don't even have work. You go there and seven people sitting in an office talking to each other. <laughs> wow. So now the biggest issue is with, the, with this huge youth unemployment contingent, um, the, the biggest industry here is illegal mining. So if you're going to be illegal mining, oh, here's a fun fact about Valcom. You can never go to the ATM and get 200 rand notes. All the illegal oh, yeah. miners have 200 yeah. rand notes with them because that's how you do business. So if you're going to be in any kind of industry, go into illegal mining. Um, so let me give you a breakdown. So if you're in the illegal mining, you're going to be good for life. So in, oh yeah. In Valcom, you can't buy Nando's chickens in bulk. So if you buy 50 Nando's chickens, they must um, call the police because apparently illegal miners love Nando's. So what they did was, no, but you, you guys laugh, but 50 Nando's chickens is a million rand. So if you can get your hands on 50 Nando's chickens and you can get a hold of a middleman who can take money to the illegal miners in the hole, you get a million rand because those guys stay down there for seven, eight months at a time. So they, they don't come out at all. They sit there. And so you bring them food, you bring them alcohol. If you, I know people who, who have lost like their liquor licenses. So they go to, to, um, to the wholesalers and buy pallets of liquor just for the illegal miners. Um, so one beer and one cider, if they put it in like a bundle and it's 125 rand for two. Oof. So there's, there's a huge economy on that side. And there's nothing else. Valcom is on the micro scale what the rest of the country is on the macro. We just have better neighborhoods like Johannesburg or Cape Town or Durban. But basically, the, the whole country's been eviscerated. And now we're all illegal miners. We're all trying to get to eke out an existence and live underground most of the time and drink away our troubles. That's pretty much what we've come to. Thank you very much to the ANC. So I want to bring in uh, Sitle and Gobese as well. Sitle, we're talking to uh, Lito and to Pumi this morning about all kinds of things. And guys, since we're all um, here now, I, I wanted to ask you quickly, the elections are coming up. We've spoken about Valcom. Um, Sitle, you travel the country. I mean, you, you're always running around. What's the, what's the general feeling? Because it feels to me almost like some areas don't even know there's an election coming in a couple mm. of days. It's firstly, good morning, everybody. It's been a rather interesting mix of apathy and a nonchalance type uh, approach to it. Um, For the most 
sort of uh, amount of time I've been based here in Durban, Mlazi, um, between here in the township I live in and, of course, on the farm. Um, and in, you know, in Mapumulu, uh, near Stanga. And it really is a mixture of apathy and people just really not caring. So on the one hand, it's a sense of, you know, I mean, here's a bit of a funny story in, in 10 seconds. You know, during the registration weekend, the ANC were perhaps one of the more <clears throat> louder voices in terms of the loud hailers. I call it the battle yes. of the loud hailers in Emalokshin in townships, you know, because you have these vehicles that roam around and literally at the crack of dawn or even late in the evening, they'll tell you the virtues of either the, the DA or the ANC or the EFF. Um, with some young person's voice, you know, very exuberantly telling you about how great this party is. The yeah, one... but ANC, because the ANC is the only party that it's, can take you from it's, poverty. It's it's a, Join it's us. Is, what is, what <laughs> are the ANC? Here's a bit of super funny. The ANC vehicle kept apologizing, so he would make a statement like, okay, the ANC has been in power since uh, 1994. We know how to govern. Yes, we know there have been mistakes along the way and a lot of corruption has happened, but everybody makes mistakes. You've got to actually vote us in again because we can do better this time. And you have sort of residents look at each other and scratch their heads on like, like really, is, is this the messaging it's come to now? Vote for us because we've been here. Um, we might make mistakes, but just give us another chance. Um, and the DA is no better, if I'm to be brutally honest, and the EFF is no better. It's basically these individuals as a last gasp. It, the, the politicians and the political elites and those political operators operate in their own bubble. And then there's the rest of us, the residents, who basically look at them and are like, yeah, guys, you don't live in the reality that we live in. For example, in my area, right here where I live, the water is switched off every evening at 7 p.m. So if you're not, if you're not back, by as a resident, you know, let's say you missed your ordinary bus and you're not back after a full day's work at the factory, your ass is not gonna get a shower in the evening. And then that same political party will come to you in the evening and loud hail how great they are uh, and how you should give them another chance even though mistakes are being made. So there's an apathy that's developed from that and a, just a sense of not even wanting, wanting to get involved because people kind of realize that, that they're being dribbled and distracted here by political elites who don't, who are not based in reality. So it'll be a very interesting election. And I'm not surprised to hear the likes of Darby Skulls, guys who crunch these numbers in terms of, you know, how many people are, are eligible to vote and register to vote, blah, blah, blah. I'm not surprised to hear him tell us that, look, this is perhaps one of those few elections where uh, there are less people voting this time than in the last election. It, it doesn't surprise me. Mm. Well, you don't see a lot of campaigning aside from, from maybe the loud hailers because I don't see as many posters as I, I have in previous elections. The prizes, obviously, you know, you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. The prizes here are not so great because the prizes involve service delivery, involves sorting out municipalities that are in ruin, and that's not a glamorous job. All the people who are after the big jobs are only interested in the national elections. So maybe we should all just take seriously these independent candidates. Do any of you have any strong feelings on, um, on what Musi Maiman is doing, the fact that there are these independents coming around? It's not going to help you in Velkom, Lito, because unfortunately no one wants to be mayor of Velkom. No one. No one. Well, you know, Gareth, like, also, by the way, see, I just boiled your water. So you know what happens? I've literally went to try and find out what happens and why is it that they switch off the water at night. So places that switch off the water at night, the water board doesn't have any chemicals to, to treat the water. So what they do is they switch the water off at night so the muck and algae can go down to the bottom of the tank. And so then in the morning when they open the water, the water doesn't come out green or brown. Mm. So if you're in one of those towns, just boil your water. Jeez. But then, you know, the independent candidates for me, you know, Musi Maiman is a whole thing sort of, it made sense when he announced it, but yesterday when they were launching, it started to confuse me even more, right? Mm -hmm. So all the independent um, all these independent uh, candidates then came out with banners of their own under one essay. So they had like New Horizon in, um, um, where, where was it? Uh, or something. Fulin, yeah. So everybody seems to have their own banner. So I'm thinking, is there a centralized message or are you just a platform for support? And so now it becomes even more confusing to, 
to a to a South African voter who's just like, I man, all these people just suck. The rest of you, we don't like you. Like we don't like these politicians anyway. And then you bring us this platform that seems to be just like social media for people who want to be in municipalities. So Musi's whole thing is really confusing. And mm. then he doesn't lead the messaging. There was like a random white guy there yesterday and somebody then said he's the co-leader of the party. And now I'm like, what, what is this? What are you talking about? I, I was shouting at the TV yesterday and you know me. I like to shout at the TV and I leave mean YouTube comments. That's all I do in my life, right? <laughs> and so I... <laughs> I was so frustrated, guys, because it made no um, sense at all. Because you're not trying to confuse the voter in South Africa. They're already tired of the system. And the system in and of itself is tired of itself. It's collapsing yeah. in on itself. And so well, the platform that Musi is hosting, it's just confusing. And I don't think South Africans would buy in now. For me? So I think what, what Leto so vividly paints is is the picture that almost all the candidates not just the anc but the da and any of the independents are facing the idea that you walk into the municipality and you have to build everything from scratch and mm -hmm. you have you have no means to do it you don't have the resource to do it because you are walking into a municipality that's got an 80 percent unemployment rate which means you cannot raise money so you're in a hole and there's no way of raising the money and you have to fix all of the things that that are broken or that have been allowed to break. And that is that's where the crux of it is. And and it's not just in Valcom. Throughout the country, we know the statistics. We know the statistics that say we've got 34%, I think it's a little bit more like 45% unemployment now that we have got 65% um, of our young people have no matric. So even if you were able to get foreign investment and build a factory, you can't hire 65% of the young people that are sitting unemployed because they don't have the basic minimum requirement to be able to be employed. So that, that's the stack. That, well, that so, so, so many people in this country are already used to living in anarchy. And this is a point that I've made a couple of times. So many of them have already given up on the political process and they don't care about whatever rules are made in parliament. They don't care about the municipality and what even police. I mean, most people just ignore the police these days. I don't see very many people taking them seriously. And Count Dracos says, now is the time to take back our individual power. It sounds like we could run ourselves without these jokers. I mean, some municipalities, yes. the ordinary people have taken over. Sitle, I see you getting very um, adamant yes, about that. Because that's the energy. That's the energy South Africans need to adopt. And I can tell you now that they don't need to listen to Big Daddy Liberty to hear it. They don't need to listen to their favorite politician to hear it. Gareth, they don't need to listen to you to hear it. People no. are already doing this. People of no. means and varying levels of means are able in their own small way to slowly but surely shore themselves up against the existing and current government failure. We're seeing it right now. For instance, here in Mlazi, I can assure you, people are literally buying them Jojo tanks and water pumps. I'm seeing solar mm -hmm. panels go up. I'm seeing security, uh, much like you used to see in the suburbs. You know, the walls mm -hmm. are getting higher and higher here in these townships, especially after those July riots. If you want to find a single event in particular that showed people that exact point, that you're on your own in this country, no politician is going to come and say, there's no glossy Musi Maimani or a John Stenhazen explaining certain posters away or a, a Cyril Ramaphosa you know, getting heckled in a Kaklehong. All of that crap doesn't matter because where do you're on your own. Hashtag politicians are trash, as I often say on my show. So here's the, here's the bottom line. <laughs> Here's the bottom line. You're beginning to see people say, you know what? Any extra funding, any extra rant I have, I'll buy something that, that protects me from that filthy politician who on the one hand taxes me to death, but at the same time provides nothing. So I'm not surprised to hear people say that. That's the energy people are going to take into this. Yeah. And this is what I think will surprise politicians. And people just don't care anymore. That's the actual sad part well, about Project I mean South Africa. I think it, you're right about the riots and, and, and the looting that we saw in KZN, but it, it was before that already because I remember oh, yeah. with, with the onset of lockdown, there were certain parts of South Africa where they just nobody cared. 
They just carried on, man. There were no masks and sanitizers and people staying at home. They had shit to do. They had income to make. They had children just to teach. They had uh, mouths to feed. They didn't pay attention to any of these stupid government rules. And then Cyril comes along and says, we're on adjusted level X, Y, or Z. People are like, whatever, dude. We're not listening to you. So let me um, ask all three Karen, of you. Before, be before you go on, funny yes. welcome story to depress us when we leave this segment behind. <laughs> um, Sorry. So speaking about the police and Bronville, yesterday they held a community meeting, the police, with the community, and guess what they said? If you have a complaint, don't come mm. to the police station. Mm. Go to the CPF. If your husband is beating you, go to the CPF before you come to us. They'll oh go God. and beat the husband, and maybe he'll be better. And then only can you come to the police station if the CPF beats these people and they don't change their ways. So the police are saying, please, don't, don't come to us. We're tired. <laughs> go and get the CPF to go and beat whoever you have a problem with. We're giving them authority. They said we're giving them authority <laughs> to go and whip whoever you don't like. If they don't do the job, you can come and make a, a, a statement at the police station. This is the police, a man in uniform, a representative of the government said, don't Listen, come to us if you have problems. I, I think we're warming up to one conclusion through all of these horrendous stories. And I'm so sorry, again, for you and the people of Belcom Leto. And I, I don't mean to laugh because I'm mocking you. I'm laughing because I cannot actually believe it's come to this. I think we've just all got to agree, based on the evidence that's been presented here and what is going on in municipalities across the country, that there is just nobody who can, with good conscience, vote for the ANC in the next election. You just can't. Ah, you'd be surprised. Right? Well, I mean, you'd I'm be saying surprised. That's, that's my conclusion anyway. Now, let's move on to no, something. No, you're right. There's something going on here that is as important as the municipal elections. It's the, the, the nomination and the eventual... Uh, what, what do you call it, appointment of the, the chief justice, the head of the judiciary. This is the person who will sit on the constitutional court, who will be the, the, the main judge, who, uh, who speaks to the other judges, who runs the judiciary from his office in Midrand, something that has been the province of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a, a reasonably good judge so far, someone who people have had their problems with, as they will with anyone in that position. But Mohueng Mohueng is on his way out. And it's now time for us to find a new one. Well, I just want to play you a little bit of something from the JSC yesterday or, or this week when they were interviewing candidates, because this is quite frightening. I don't know who this woman is. I'm not sure where she comes from, but she wants to be our Chief Justice. And here's uh, Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo asking her a few questions. You're smiling because you've seen it before. But for those who haven't, here she is answering a question about a certain rule in law, which comes from a precedent case, uh, Plascon versus uh, Evans or something. Listen to this. Uh, familiar with the Plascon Evans rule in motion matters? Yes, I did. Yes. yes. Do you want to share with the commissioners what it entails? Plascon. Plascon Evans rule. Evans rule. Hmm. I don't know which on on because. It is used in most, uh, is a principle that is used in most cases, in, all, in most matters. So I don't know, maybe if they, com uh, the a a mm. CJ can in, in, maybe In direct. motion matters, it's, it's a, a rule that applies in uh, oppo opposed motion matters. Yes, I, I know it's, 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 it's mostly applied in opposed motion matters. Yes, where, where we... Maybe the, the, the other party will be requesting the court to look at that um, <laughs> that rule um, in order to consider whether it's fair for... <laughs> Yo, actually, I, I came a lot with um, with that rule, so I, maybe I, I... That's why I'm requesting uh, CJ to maybe to direct me as to particularly uh, what instance. Well... Uh... Uh, if, if you are familiar with it, uh, you ought not to require any further information. <laughs> Once I say plus con events rule, you should know what it is. Yes, I know. It's just that mm -hmm. I, I, I remember various cases where I, I was faced with that rule, but then I don't know which one to, how to answer this question, actually. Yes. Uh, have you sat in uh, uh, 
put there, but that's. <laughs> So, but I mean, this is it for Chief right. Justice, though. This is this is for mm. con court. This is for con court judges because that's mm. this is not for Chief Justice. Chief Justice even, is even so. <laughs> even so, if this is the kind of the, the caliber of legal professional who thinks they can be on the constitutional court, the highest court in the land, I'm very very concerned. We know that the the judiciary has been compromised, uh, certainly under the Jacob Zuma, Zuma administration. We know lots of people were put in there who were completely incapable. But this woman can't answer a simple question. And, you know, Judge Zondo is trying his best not to be horrible to her, which is to his credit. But, my God, do we not have anyone of, of decent caliber, a chief justice? Well, this is what frightens me in the sense that, you know, uh, and I want to step on toes here, stuff it. Um, we will then have people who will trade on race and will trade on gender, suggesting suggesting that that is the best amongst us. And that's what makes it incredibly infuriating. Someone will appropriate my skin color, my race, and say, you know what, we need to see more black women or more black men on the judiciary, which is in and of itself absolutely laudable fine. You know, if you want, if you want to see that based on race, okay, cool. But if you're going to do or say something like that, choose the best amongst us. Choose the best amongst us. Don't come and literally parade a certain cohort of people who you claim represent me on a racial and a gender basis. And then literally I see someone who, even as a layman, a layman, I can tell this person doesn't know what they're talking about. Worse yet, when they're questioned by someone who is amongst the best amongst us, who judge Zondo, by the way, you can see chalk and cheese, chalk and cheese. Yet you have people who literally trade on race telling you, no, 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 you've got to choose certain people based on race, based on gender, because they somehow represent me and having them over there will somehow make things better for me. And then I see someone like that, it becomes very insulting. That's why I don't like this race and gender thing in this country, because often it's trading on race and gender to put some of the worst amongst us forward and literally shunning some of the best amongst us, putting them at the back. Uh, okay. Yeah. But that's, that's a little bit reductionist, though. Because when you do bring up race and gender, you bring it up to say, give the best space to, to compete. But, but that's knowing, the intention. But knowing that the they, were, they are good, but they were discriminated in the past because they were not judged on how good they are. Let me tell so you, that, that, woman, that, that it, woman should be, that whoever that no, was, no, no. she should, that she woman, should be. Somebody should have said, Somebody should have just whispered, get up and walk out. Like, yes. that's all that should have happened with that woman. Because, yeah. but I, I, I appreciate the JSE and its interviews because now we got to see that, right? We got yeah. to understand that there is somebody who is half-witted and is walking around thinking they're, they're, they're a, a legal professional, right? But it's also that the transparency of it, I think, is, is, is very refreshing. We got to see that person but we also mm -hmm. got to see the best of what um, um, those, those candidates could be, right? Um, the answers that we've got, and especially when they're being grilled under, uh, uh, um, you know, the ANC gives very softball questions on that commission, mm -hmm. by the way. Yeah. But there, there are people who've been grilling these, these candidates. And at times, you know, the grilling sometimes seems um, malicious, but you get to understand the character of these people. I remember there's the one um, lady, Pile, who withdrew her... Her, 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 her application because at some point Julius was just grilling her and saying you openly say Pravin Gordon is your best friend but then you mm -hmm. want to sit in one of the highest courts in the country how right. do you then um, bring these two points together and say this is your best friend who could be litigated against and so how do we trust you with that position when you're best friends with, um, uh, with, with government officials and she couldn't even understand that there is, there should be a clear distinction between the judiciary and the legislature. She didn't understand why she couldn't be friends with Pravin because she's a citizen of South Africa. She didn't understand that her job necessitates that she not be friends with somebody in Pravin's yeah. in Pravin's place. So it's it's, but it's very refreshing to see that something in this country, something works because it's one of the things that give me hope to say. There is something that works. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Listen, oh. I mean, I just, I, I just played that because it's an example of the worst. But I do agree with you. Like, there are perfectly oh. capable people. And, and we, we actually should be finding these capable people. We, we joked the other day on the show, since we're back to elections again, um, 
we, we joked about how there are Karens in our neighborhoods, right? Those same people who we, we, we were mocking during the, the lockdown at the beginning because they were, they were telling on neighbors. Those are actually the kind of people we need in municipal and local government because they get things done. As painful as they are and as horrible as they are, they get things done. So vote for your neighborhood Karen and get her One to stand for things- election. Get her to stand. So one of the things that that is very clear, watching, and and I watched a lot of these um, interviews over the past couple of days, both the black and the white, and all of them had at some point some really there there were some fantastic candidates, black and white, yes, and there were some uh, scary characters, black and white. (laughs) <laughs> but what what it what it also demonstrates is it demonstrates the people who are willing to put themselves out there right that's that's the difference is these guys have put up their hand and they have said i can do this job and a lot of them kind of have a bigger estimation of themselves than sure. <laughs> what what the interview process has laid bare it's it's similar to kind of like idols right we all watch idols and we see the people that stand in the queue for hours and hours and hours and when they get in front of the judges they can't sing but they came to the queue it's mm. the fact that a lot of people don't put their hands up. We don't yeah. convince the people, the best among us, as Sitle says, we don't yeah. convince those people to stand. They're, they're, they're happy to be wallflowers at the end. And this is the problem that we face, is we've got to convince more of the so, best to stand up. So this is, a, this is a really great panel, and it would be a waste of, of the opportunity if I didn't ask each of the three of you, what do you want in, in these elections, if anything? And are you participating? Are you going to be going to the polls? Do you have anyone that you think you could vote for in your ward? I've kind of covered this ground with Lieto, but not, for, not with the rest of you. So Pumi and Sitle, you can start off with answering that. And then uh, Leto, are you going to stay in Velkom? Because honestly, it sounds like hell. It sounds like Mordor from Lord of the Rings right now. Oh, oh. You, you start, Pumi. Well, y'all know about my girl Felicity out here in my, in my hood. She is amazing. So, mm-hmm. yes, you which have to vote for she, the person which, which you know. I don't know. I actually you, don't you know. know. And I don't even care. I actually really don't care. Is she, she on is like a WhatsApp group? Is she, is she on a WhatsApp group and she's campaigning she, there? She's on a WhatsApp group. She's on the Facebook. She's on the she's on the socials, y'all. But okay. but also, as I keep saying to you, what what I want is I want my billing to be correct. I want the potholes to be fixed. I want the traffic lights working, and mm-hmm. that's what municipal elections are about. It's about collect my collect my rubbish, right? Just collect my rubbish on the day that the rubbish is supposed to be collected. Can the you know billing be correct? Can I get my bill? on time and it be the correct bill that's what that's what i want but i'm privileged because i live in an environment that that that's where the problems that's the extent of the problems that we have in the area that i live in like just clean up the side of the road hmm. but that's that's the privilege that i live with but also i have to participate so when when there's an outage because the down the road the the system has like blown. There's a cable that's blown, and there are people there working in our group, Felicity's WhatsApp group. It's a hey guys, please can we get can we get coffee for the guys working down the road? You, you know what I'm saying? That's the kind of stuff that you have to be have to be part of. Sisley, what about you? What I'm going to look do? what party Felicity's with. I'm going to ask yeah, someone. Yeah, check it out because people are asking. Yeah, look, I, I, I don't know. I'm a begrud- begrudging voter. Um, so I might just spend the day saying stuff it um, and just go to my farm, clear fields, put up fencing and actually do something productive. Um, but who knows? I don't know. I haven't really thought about this yet. I don't know who I would vote for. And yeah, who knows at this point? Um, I, I represent that, that majority, I think, of voters who just are not sure at this point. And totally disillusioned with the whole system. Yeah. And I've been for a very long time. Hashtag politicians are trash, man. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Are you going to stay in Velkom? This is what everybody wants to know. (laughs) On my my best day, I just want to get a janitor job in Johannesburg and go to Mabonin and, you know, be a young person who is not worried about this damn country. But I have two jobs in this place. 
One is my students at this university. I, I have to be the light for them. I, I have to show them there's something bigger. I have to show them that you can, you can be a student, but you can also be an activist. You can work in your community and be an activist as well. And I, I need to be there for them. And I think this is the unselfish part of me I hate about myself and I want to murder every morning because it, it's, it's both fulfilling and it's this huge curse that, you know, these, um, these students who come from these backgrounds that are horrendous, right? And their only hope is university. And it, they come so broken. You guys don't understand how broken university students who come from these um, low resource schools are. They are broken to the point where they, they're not confident enough to ask questions in class. So sure. I, I have to start there. That's me. I have to give them that, that one thing that I came from where you come from. I'm articulate. I'm, I'm, I'm good and I'm prepared to help, right? Mm -hmm. I help the high school kids. I hold debate tournaments for them. I help the TVET um, um, sector now. They've started to ask me to hold debates for them. I even hold debates for the police academy here in Belco. I help them debate and start to use their critical skills. But then secondly, I have to be here for this damn municipality. I, I don't care if I'm, if, if I'm shitting in a hole for the rest of my life, but I have to challenge them. I can't just leave because that's what people in Belcom do. You get yeah. your, your university degree and you leave. You go to Johannesburg, you go to Pretoria, and you're good. But I have to stay here and I have to challenge every meeting. I have to go. I have to go and stand there and ask them, why do you have gunmen in my community standing in a meeting? And if that is my only job, if the community just knows, I remember there's a guy who wanted to come and illegally dump his rubbish like in public. And the small kids ran to my house and came and got me to go and reprimand him. So the kids know. The kids know that Abu Tilieto is here in our community. If somebody wants to do something that's wrong, he will come and he'll talk him down. Right? And I think if that's the small part I contribute to making this place better, I'll do it. I'll stay here. I'll, I'll stick with the with the water I have to boil every time before I drink it in order to make this place better in that small way. I so love I'm, you, Lieto. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it there. We can't really get much better than that. Thank God for people like you, Lieto, because um, we all need to stand up and be counted like you are. Yeah. And I'm glad you got the last word this morning. Uh, Sitla, I'm sorry we had some trouble connecting to you in the beginning, but we'll get you back on sometime soon. It's always good to have you on. Uh, Pums, thank you very much. I just want to finish off with this picture of Patricia DeLille in boxing gloves. On a <laughs> <laughs> Make your hood good. Make your hood good. It turns out, though, that there was a candidate for the good party, and this may be of some interest to, to you if you are a regular listener to the show, because we actually spoke to someone from the good party. He's a guy called Carlos Mesquita. I kid you not, as in Mosquito, but with an A. Carlos Mesquita, who's running in Ward, Ward 54, and apparently he is a known criminal who's just pleaded guilty oh. to a whole bunch of charges. Oh. So that kind of makes the word good. <laughs> it makes the word good seem like it's not the right word here oh. in this particular set of circumstances. So Patricia, you better clean up your house as well. Don't think we've forgotten about you just because you've Very been hiding, hiding in public works and campaigning only in the Western Cape. We're still watching Jeez. you. You got to yeah. love South Africa. Everyone believes they can yeah. be a politician in this country. I love it. Well, <laughs> Well, the barrier to entry is very low, so take advantage. Well, that's because she builds terrible fences. That's why it's really terribly low. <laughs> All right, progress. everybody. Uh, good, luck with, good luck with your farming at the end of this month, uh, Sitle, and, and for Pumi and Leto. Did you find out who that party is? That I didn't. Belong? I'm, like, looking on the thing. She's... All right, well, you got to check the posters then, Pums. Yo, All right, yo. But or you've maybe... got to know the people. So, but maybe the she's independent. You've got to know the people. Yeah, maybe she's independent. Well, I'll tell you that there are two women running in. It's it's both women running in my neighborhood who I've seen posters for. I don't know who the other candidates are. So I'm I'm going to have to find out who they are, get to meet them. I know one of them, but the other one I still got to meet. And we'll see who wins. You know, make the effort. I suppose that's what you got to do. Meet them. All right, everybody. Have a happy day and uh, and get through this Thursday. And in Velcom, I hope things improve for you, even if it's just incrementally. Uh, Lieto, it's always good to see you. Thanks, everybody. See you tomorrow, six o'clock, bright and early. Cheers. <laughs>